Hey guys, here's another one for you. So I'm going to continue on the uh, recovery part. Um, so we talked about um, getting help when showering. Um, I actually didn't mention, and I'm sorry I didn't mention, but it's not just showering and the wiping yourself. Most of you can handle that on your own. If you can't though, if you truly are having a difficult time, you're going to have to ask for help, okay? This just is how we are. But we have family for a reason, you know. What I recommend, okay, for example, as females, all of you females out there, if you have a close relationship with your mom, you've seen her naked, she's seen you naked, you guys don't have an issue. It's going to sound weird. Guys are not going to understand. But women are very close. And the reason why is because we have a lot of stuff going on with our bodies that we have no one else to ask, you know. A lot of us have to ask someone we're comfortable with, either older sisters who've already gone through it, mothers, if you have a best friend that you're very comfortable with, that's who you go to. But when it comes to health, family is who you're going to back up on. Or if you have a significant other, like a partner, who's comfortable with your body and is able to help you, great. I did not have that. I only had my mom. So you're going to need the help. A second thing, I, I didn't mention this, is you are going to have a really hard time dressing yourself. I'm sorry to say this. It's very hard. You are most likely going to go through a period where you... You really just don't want to wear anything with buttons and zippers. You are going to be sweatpants in it, pajamas it the whole time. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I'll tell you why there's nothing wrong with that. Because if anyone tells you that you have to wear a pair of jeans and you have nobody to help you put those jeans on, I give you full permission to slap that person across the face. I might create a lot of fights doing that and telling you that, but I'm telling you right now, you have my full permission. And the reason why I say that is because it is a bitch of a time to try to put on a pair of jeans. First of all, the damaged hand, it don't work the way it used to. Uh-uh. There's no way that this hand is going to be able to grasp a damn zipper. Second thing is if even, even if I switch hands and I try to use this hand to put the two pairs of the zippers together to hold, and then I use my other hand to zip it. It ain't going to work. Your hand does not work that way anymore. It might eventually, but when you're recovering and you have a cast and your, your, your strength is very, very, very small, you won't even be able to lift up, lift up a glass of water, let alone do a zipper. Second thing is, a lot of us wear things that are just slightly tight. Not tight that you can't breathe or you're uncomfortable, but Everyone has to suck in just a little bit. Because if you wear something that is loose, it doesn't fit properly and creates a lot of really embarrassing situations. So all of us have to have that little bit of snugness in our pants. So when you can't, when you don't have any strength to put those two pieces, you know, that part of the jeans together, or the part, even a shirt, even to put a shirt, little tiny buttons and holes, that is extremely hard to do. So I don't, I, I tell people when you're going through this, don't wear anything with zippers and buttons unless you have somebody to help you put them on and put them off. Another thing is you cannot grip the pants to pull them on your legs. You know, like I said, jeans, you don't just, you know, step in and pull up that easily. There's a little bit of resistance. Certain types of fabrics have a little bit of resistance. Don't wear those fabrics. I'm telling you right now, pajamas, sweatpants. That's all you need to worry about. T-shirts, pull over sweaters. Nothing with zippers. If you can pull it over your head, throw it over yourself, pull it up with ease. Even drawstrings. Don't worry about drawstring, drawstrings. Okay, if you have something that's got elastic in it and drawstrings, just use the elastic, okay? I'm telling you right now, this is gonna save your life. It's gonna save your 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 it's gonna save your life, period, because you're gonna get so frustrated. And I'm gonna go a little darker right now. And I wanna tell you that I went there and I'm, I got through it, and it's okay. And yeah, sometimes you're still going to go through it when you're at my stage, but it happens. Another thing that you go through with Kynebox disease, especially in the recovery stages, doctors don't tell you about this. They tell you the physical part of it, the medical part of it, but they don't tell you this part of it. So I am going to tell you this part. You are going to go through a period of time where you are going to be extremely depressed. And I say extremely depressed because you are going to feel like you are useless. You are going to feel like nothing you do is going to go right. That everything you do fails. That you can't even cut your own food. You can't even feed yourself sometimes. 
depending on how bad your condition is. If you're able to, if you're like me and you have a certain level of ambidexterity, I think that's how you say it, but if, if you're ambidextrous even slightly where you can use both hands, you're still going to go through this stage, but it's going to be a little easier on you. You're not going to be able to cut your own food. You're not going to be able to, to, to uh, hold glasses of water. You know, like if I'm trying to hold a glass and pour liquid into it, I can't do that. I can try to hold it, but my grip doesn't work the way it used to. So you're going to go through a period of time where you're like that. You're probably going to hate being in your pajamas and your sweatpants all day, or you're going to be like me, and you're going to freaking love it. You're going to freaking love it because, for once, you're completely comfortable. For once, you don't have to worry about your makeup and your hair. You don't have to worry about anything. You're going to hate it because you have to get someone to help you shower during that time, which sucks. But trust me, after a couple days of just saying, I can't handle, like, there's going to be, okay, I'm going to be very, very, very graphic here. When you're going through this condition, this disease, you don't want to shower. And the reason why is because you get out of breath extremely fast. What takes, what used to take five to 10 minutes to shower is going to take you 20 minutes. And it's going to feel like you are running a damn marathon because the amount of effort it takes for you to stand for that long and to force yourself to go through the motions of showering and bathing and sc scrubbing and soaping and especially your hair because women, we're used to doing it with two hands. Can't do it with two hands no more. Everything is one hand. So you're reaching around this way and you're reaching around that way and you're trying to get in there. It didn't work that way. It's hard. So you're going to go through that period of time where you're going to be really down. You're going to be sad. You're going to be crying a lot. You may even scream. It's just normal. It sucks that I'm saying that, but it's normal. But you're also going to get out of it too. You're going to get to a point where showering becomes easy. You're going to get your cast off. You can shower now without having help. It's going to be a little harder still, but you can still do it. You know, you're going to learn how to hold things to make it easier for yourself. You're going to learn how to cut corners to make things easier. For example, um, I learned that, I'm trying to think of what the best example, bear with me here. Okay, so I forget, I remember something. Girls, when you're recovering, you're not going to want to wear jewelry. I'll tell you right now. Because you can't get it, the damn things open. Can't get the clasps. Can't do it. You're going to have to learn, especially for the women that don't like wearing sweatpants or pants that are just easy, that don't have zippers and stuff like that. You're going to have to learn to cut some corners and wear them anyways. Find a way to make it look cute if, if that's really important to you. If, if you really just feel more comfortable by accessorizing a bit, find a way to do that. But you're going to have to learn to change how you do things. Another thing is my family, because my mom has a disability with her arms, um, it might cost a little bit, but maybe get doors that are levers, not doors that are, are knobs. And the reason why I say that, because we don't have the strength to grip some doors and turn. Our range of motion is different. So anything that I can push down on to open a door, much easier for you. Trust me, you're going to learn the hard way when you get locked in the damn bathroom and you can't get it open because it, it just takes a certain amount of strength to open it and you don't have that strength anymore. You're going to scream and cry just trying to open a door. Um, another thing is, you're probably going to not have a lot of strength to open public doors. And you're going to have to learn to ignore people who call you lazy and call you bad names for pressing the disabled button that opens the door for you. So you're going to have to learn how to be tough. Um, I'm not saying you're fully disabled, but a lot of you will end up as bad as me, and you will be disabled. You actually be officially disabled, and that's okay. But you're going to have to learn to be a little tough because people, as much as we hope that they're nicer to us for having a disability, the reality is they're not. So that's that part of it. That's the sad part. I'm going to talk to you in the next video some ways to help you, okay, to make it easier on you. And I'm hoping that these videos help, that you have someone to, to you know, get advice from. Okay, so I'm going to cut this now and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.